Good morning, everyone. Good morning, and welcome to World Communion Sunday here at Christ United Methodist Church. My name is Pastor Janet Wilson, and I'm honored to be leading through this morning one of my favorite Sundays in the United Methodist calendar and the global church calendar, where we remember that we are all one, at least in the most important of ways. Just a couple notes before we head into worship. Uh, we have a blood drive happening here on Wednesday. There are lots and lots of slots open and there is a national blood shortage. So if you are able to make it and donate or encourage your family to do that, um, the event is on our Facebook page so you could share that forward um, just to try and get people here for that. There is a save the date in a bulletin for our annual church conference, the first live in person one since 2019. So that's going to be on a Thursday afternoon and we hope you all can come for what is kind of a combination annual business meeting celebration of our faith community. And lastly in your bulletin, you know this parking lot thing happened and I'm sure we've all noticed it and the initial parts of that were covered by um, members of the leadership team. But there's just a letter we'd like you to read and consider to um, contribute to helping that project. So all that being said, just take a deep breath and center where you are on this beautiful, beautiful fall morning as we enter into worship and considering the table of joy that is brought to us in Holy Communion. Good morning, I'm Diane Garfield, a lay leader here at Christ United Methodist Church. It's so nice to see your smiley faces here today on the nice sunshiny day. So we'll start with a call to worship. Welcome to this place where children and seasoned citizens sit side by side where heaven and earth embrace in peace, where God has been, is, and always will be. Welcome to this place as we gather with all of God's children, where we find God's love, where we hear the tender voice of Jesus, where the Spirit teaches us new songs. Welcome to this place where all is made ready by our God, where we bring our hunger and find food, where we bring our brokenness and find healing, where we bring our very selves and find acceptance. Please join me in the call to worship. We hear God's calling to have joyful spirits as Christ's followers. We lift our hearts to be filled with vim and vigor. We know that sometimes it is difficult to be joyful in life. We recognize that joy is a practice not just a happy feeling. We open ourselves to the joy that comes with justice. We make room at this table for joy in all its forms. Please pray with me. Lord God, you keep speaking your word to us through your son, Jesus Christ. Make us listen to that word and welcome it with all that is in it, us. Let the word change our minds and our ways. Let the word direct our lives to make them a, li a lived message of good news for all to see, to be inspired by, and to follow. Let it be the, the living power that leads all to give you praise and glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I see that now. Uh, <laughs> we're going to start by just reflecting that, that joy and the joy in our Lord Jesus Christ by singing the old familiar hymn, 
joyful, joyful. If you're following in your hymnal, it's hymn number 89. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee, Lord of glory, Lord of love. Hearts unfold like flowers before thee, opening to the sun above. Melt the clouds of sin and sadness, drive the dark of doubt away. Giver of immortal gladness, fill us with the light of day. All thy works with joy surround thee, earth and heaven reflect thy rays. Stars and angels sing around thee, center of unbroken praise. Field and forest, vale and mountain, flowery meadow, flashing sea, chanting bird and flowing fountain, call us to rejoice in thee. Thou art forgiving and forgiving, ever blessing, ever blessed, wellspring of the joy of living, ocean depth of happy rest. Thou our Father, Christ our brother, all who live in love are thine. Teach us how to love each other, lift us to the joy divine. Mortals join the mighty chorus which the morning stars began. Love divine is reigning o'er us, Binding all within its span, ever singing, march we onward, victors in the midst of strife. Joyful music leads us onward in the triumph song of life. Nothing like starting the morning with a little Beethoven. <laughs> to get that joyful feeling. I love that song. We come in our worship service to a time of offering, a time where we give back with hopefully joyful hearts to the God who loves us and creates abundance in our lives in so many ways. As the ushers come through, may you give today as the Holy Spirit leads you to give. You can also put your connection cards, if you are done with those, in the plate as Mark and Dick come through. May it be a time of blessing for you and for God. Please rise as you are comfortable as we sing our prayer and praise in the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here below. Alleluia, alleluia. Praise God the source of all our gifts. Praise Jesus Christ who power of lives. Praise, Praise the, the Spirit, Spirit, Holy Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. 
loving God, with joyful hearts, we return these gifts for you, that you may use them to create your kingdom on earth as it is in heaven, in and through and around and despite and all the things this community of faith. May we be your partners. May we be a part of that creation. We give you this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Please be seated. We come to a time of prayer in our worship service, a time where we just reflect together on our needs and joys and sorrows and just a couple of notes. Um, David Wood did finally have his surgery this week and um, came through that well and um, is recovering, so continued prayers for he and Kathy as they walk that path. And we celebrate a, a joy this morning as Laura has gotten her American Michigan driver's license. So she is celebrating and we celebrate with her. So that's a, that's a big milestone in her being at home here in Battle Creek. And we are joyful with you for that. As we begin this time of prayer, we're just going to take a few minutes few moments of silence that you may offer what is on your heart and your mind and your spirit to God before I pray. So let us be in prayer, my friends. Loving God, we thank you for this beautiful day. We've all noticed it. We've spoken of it. We know that these days in October and September are precious and fleeting. May we stand and appreciate them today. I thank you for these gathered people, both here in person and watching online, that they pause in busy weeks and busy lives. To worship you, to be together, to spend time considering their faith. On this day, we lift especially David Wood for physical recovery, for the family of Kathy McDaniel for recovery, and just the journey of grief and that loss. And we give thanks for ordinary and extraordinary joys that they accept in becoming a citizen and a part of the American culture for Laura as she just makes her way in a world that is so new all around her. In all things, gracious God, we know you are with us, that you are present, that your love, your comfort, your strength, your guidance, your wisdom are with with us as near as the next breath. As we observe World Communion today, along with our Christian brothers and sisters all across the globe, we ask your blessing upon us all, especially in places where finding faith and seeking faith and keeping faith are difficult, perhaps because they're scarce, perhaps because they're minority, perhaps because it's persecuted. May people feel your special hand on them today, and may we fully appreciate the incredible blessing that is ours to worship as we choose in our country. In all of this, gracious God, may we know your love. May we share your love, and may we feel your joy in every day. We give you all of this in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. 
Amen. As has been mentioned, at least on the slideshow, um, slideshow, the PowerPoint, whatever you would like to call it, um, and also from the pulpit that this is World Communion Sunday, and this is, it's such a wonderful metaphor, if not an actual um, act of give, taking communion throughout the world as we all join together, but the metaphor for me is realizing that the good news of Jesus Christ is for all, for everyone. There's no boundaries set up for certain people to be good enough or worthy enough to take communion and to be a part of the community of God, but it is a, an opportunity for us to throw our own arms open wide as Jesus Christ threw his arms open wide to us when he invited us to be in relationship with him. With that in mind and uh, with uh, the thought of no boundaries and, and no um, un unconditional love, basically, I would like to present uh, this song that's new to all of us, Room for All, and I welcome you to join me in singing it. It, it uh, lends itself to a traditional type hymn where you're hearing the, si the same melody over and over and just putting different words in there in the different um, verses. So I think once you get a feel for the song, um, you will feel comfortable in joining me in singing this song room for all. In God's house there is room for all. Every person has a place held within the arms of grace. In God's house there's no room too small. In God's house, there is room for all. In God's house, there is room for all. Every child, a child of light, all are precious in God's sight. In God's house, there's no room too small. In God's house there is room for all, room for all who hunger, room for all who thirst, room for all who love the one who loved us first. In God tiny grain of sand is a diamond in God's hand. In God's house there's no room too small. In God's house there is room for all. In God's church is there room for all. To our eyes and arms and hands where the truth that understands. In God's house, there's no room too small, for God's prepared a room for all. Room for all who hunger, room for all who thirst, room for all. child, a child of light, we're all precious in God's sight. In God's house there is no room too small, for God's prepared a room for all. In God's house there is room
Thank you, Jim. That's beautiful. Scripture lesson today is Philippians 2, 1 through 11, and I'm reading from the message. If you've gotten anything at all out of following Christ, if his love has made any difference in your life, if being in a community of the Spirit means anything to you, if you have a heart, if you care, then do me a favor. Agree with each other. Love each other. Be deep-spirited, friends. Don't push your way to the front. Don't sweet-talk your way to the top. Put yourself aside and help others get ahead. Don't be obsessed with getting your own advantage. Forget yourself long enough to lend a helping hand. Think of yourselves the way Christ Jesus thought of himself. He had equal status with God, but didn't think so much of himself that he had to cling to the advantages of that status no matter what. Not at all. When the time came, he set aside the privileges of deity and took on the status of a slave, became human. Having become human, he stayed human. It was an incredibly humbling process. He didn't claim special privileges. Instead, he lived a selfless, obedient life and then died a selfless, obedient death, and the worst kind of death at that, a crucifixion. Because of that obedience, God lifted him high and honored him far beyond anyone or anything ever so that all created beings in heaven and on earth, even those long ago dead and buried, will bow in worship before this Jesus Christ and call out in praise that he is the master of all to the glorious honor of God the Father. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. this morning. I was like a happy boy. (laughs) Happier than last week. There are days, aren't there? Today we conclude our worship series, Come to the Table on World Communion Sunday, a place where there is room for the table for us all. Over the last weeks, we've come to the table of hospitality, peace, love, and grace. And they all culminate in God's desire for us to come to the table of joy. These nouns, love, peace, hope, grace, may feel familiar as we travel through each Advent season, considering love, peace, hope, and joy. These are central tenets and aspects to a life of faith. To me, joy is the culmination. Please pray with me. Loving God, we thank you for these gifts that you have given us. Hospitality, peace, love, grace, and joy. As we hear your words, as we consider the message, as we listen to your voice, may we find, may we receive, and may we share more of these gifts in every day. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be pleasing to you on this day. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. We need to start by remembering that joy is not the same as happiness. Some in our midst and many in our community and our lives are stressed and sorrowful, anxious and angry, weary and worn. Happiness is circumstantial. I can be happy eating a great salad or watching a fun movie or basking in the sun, but the food and the movie and the sun are eventually gone, and happiness can be a little elusive and fickle, coming and going. There have certainly been times in my life when happiness has been more difficult to find. We all find ourselves in valleys sometimes, don't we? We can't but imagine that happiness is hard to find in towns recovering from fire and storm and violence. Happiness is hard to find 
when the diagnosis comes or a loss occurs or a struggle is real. The darkness easily overcomes the light of happiness. Joy, though, joy is something different. Joy is internal, spiritual, eternal, a well from which we can draw even if we have to reach to the very bottom of our faith and our spirit sometimes. And the call to worship is that joy is a practice. Joy is the Father waiting for us with open arms, a welcome that sweeps us off our feet. Even if some of us can't find that welcome anywhere but here, well, let it be here. Let it be in your faith. Let this be a sign of the coming kingdom. We all need to be reminded that there is joy in this poem, promised joy, felt joy, real joy. Let's fill the well of our joy together today. In Isaiah 12, verses 2 through 6, it says this, Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and I will not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. With joy, joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. With joy you will draw water. A daily task of time, mundane, necessary for many in the world. For us, it's as near as turning on the faucet, another metaphor perhaps to consider. Yet there is a joy in finding that water, however we find it. Drawing water is about life, about living and sustaining. It's about cleansing, making new, dying and being reborn. I baptize you with water, John says, so you can start over, so you can repent so you cannot be afraid. Fairly soon we'll plan a baptism for little Anna, water welcoming her into the family of faith. In, in water, we can give thanks to the Lord for life, for our very breath. But only if you pay attention. That's the key. Only if you listen deeply then you can hear the raindrops singing praise as they patter across leaves in the yard. Only if you look closely, then you can see the light that proclaims its presence even on the palest of days and the foggiest of mornings. Only if you live fully, then you can taste salvation and the sweetness of water, of life, and joy. There have been a couple things in my life that have made me consider my own life and my own mortality and the place of joy pretty deeply. And the first was my diagnosis with stage 3D breast cancer at the age of 47. There's some deep family history in that regard and I don't know as I was ever shocked by it really. It was always for me a bit more of a why not me than a why me. But I went through the gamut, surgery, chemotherapy, radiation, follow-up hormone blockers, full-on menopause at 47. And in cancer treatment, you see people fight and recover. And you see people fight and cancer still win the battle. Cancer is certainly not the death sentence that it was once was, thanks be to God and to medicine. But it's still an event where you realize how fully you are in charge of that particular outcome in life. And to have had that experience at a fairly young age definitely woke me up to life, to gratitude, to the miracle of every day, and to joy. What have been your wake-up calls in life? Chances are you've had one or two or three. The challenge for all of us is to stay awake, isn't it? It's really easy 
to fall back asleep into the everyday and worry and numbing and, and hard to remain able to receive the joy in every day of life. My second place of considering mortality occurs in my vocation as a pastor. In the last couple of years, I've done a lot of memorials and funerals through three communities of faith and at the request of funeral homes, some 30 of them over the last 18 months. And the families have varied widely. They've been a part of a faith community or not the person who has passed who's had faith or not. They've been young and old and in between. Last week I stood with a family as they moved the burial place of an infant who had died shortly after birth. This week I stood with Chris McGuffey and the McDaniel family as they celebrated the life of Kathy, who was only 48. Often, services are for folks who've lived a long, lovely life, yet there is always sadness and loss. It's just a hard place. Doing all of those has required me to pay attention to what is going on around me, to notice joy, to remember the fragility of life, something we don't always like to hold, right? Something we don't particularly want to keep remembering, but it's also made me consider my theology pretty deeply. How do you speak to families and people and those gathered across so many different types of faith? I certainly believe in the salvation of our faith in Christ Jesus and the hope for eternal life that lies in that salvation. That is a big part of the good news of Jesus. But I've been to a few turn or burn funerals in my life of any of you. And I knew as I started leading them that the fear of that good news is not where I wanted to go. For many people in our world today, a funeral or memorial or wedding may be the first or only experience with faith and the church that they've had in their life. So how do I offer the good news? I believe that God's hope for abundant life and joy in our life on earth is the second part of that good news. The words I speak next are words I borrowed from the service that I led here on Friday for Kathy McDaniel. No matter what we believe or say or do, God is always with us can give up on God, but God never gives up on us. God sees us, knows us, loves us exactly where we are, no messy how our life is, and says, come to me just as you are. You are enough, you are beautiful, you are loved. As a pastor and as a human being whose life was transformed by God, my hope and prayer is that each person hear that somehow in their life on earth and that they move toward God, accepting and really receiving the love, forgiveness, and grace that God offers. God wants us to be healed and whole in this lifetime. This is the abundant life that God promised. That's not about wealth. It's not about health. It's not about good things around us love and peace and hope and joy. This is the redemption and the freedom that is available to us all. And recognizing that abundant life is what can lead us to everyday joy. That is the pathway, my friends, to heaven on earth as it is joy on earth as it is in heaven. My friends, may we see and celebrate that abundant life as we move toward Holy Communion. This day is a global celebration of a sacred ritual that helps us remember Jesus' life and ministry and connects us with our Christian ancestors. This was done just the time before Jesus died. 
you really think about that? Just like 2,000 plus years of this sacrament being celebrated in our siblings across time and space. There is great joy to be found at God's table, joy in the vibrant relationships that nurture and sustain this community, joy in the sharing of gifts and resources, joy in the journey as we work toward a more just and equitable world. We celebrate our common communion table as people all over the world. Through Jesus, we are brought together, no matter how we got here, believing in the host at this table makes our joy complete. We need to share our stories, our compassion, our sympathy as part of one human family that shares the love of Christ and the breaking of the bread. Today, Christ the United Methodist Church joins with the global United Methodist Church and all other denominations and non-denominations and house churches and three or more gathered in Jesus' name in celebrating World Communion Sunday. Followers of Jesus Christ in congregations all over the globe, in Russia, my friend Laura, in large churches and small on farms and in cities in ornate buildings and under tents gather today to receive the bread and cup of Holy Communion. Followers in thousands and thousands and thousands of churches in every part of the earth remember the ministry, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ in the sacrament that he shared. Some will receive cubes of bread. Some will pair from a common loaf leavened or unleavened. Others will receive a wafer, but all will receive the body broken. Some will drink from a common chalice. Some will dip a piece of bread into the cup as we do here. Others will have individual glasses. Some will use wine. Some will use juice. All receive the blood poured out. A variety of people will lead a variety of liturgies in many languages dressed in many ways. In new normal, many will take their own bread and cup in their own sacred space, as you are invited to do at home, as we celebrate this day in virtual community. But despite all those differences and places and faces and denominations and traditions, in all the ways we connect on this day, we celebrate our unity with Jesus Christ, who taught us to do this in remembrance of me. And the link between Holy Communion and community remains at the center of this sacrament, no matter how or where. In the world in which we live, the question, who is our neighbor, becomes one of global reach and offers a profound challenge. We often consider the reach across time and space of Jesus' sacrifice and the sacrament. Today, more than ever, we see the truth that we live in a global village and that we are all neighbors caring for one another in ways we may never have imagined. Together, we prepare and we celebrate the abundant life on earth given to us by God and take our place as disciples, creating that kingdom on earth. Please join Jim in singing Come to the Table of Grace as we prepare our hearts and our minds to receive and celebrate Holy Communion on this day. God's table, it's not yours or mine. Come to the table of grace. Come to the table of peace. Come to the table of peace. This is God's
God's table, it's not yours or mine. Come to the table of peace. Come to the table of love. Come to the table of love. This is God's table, it's not yours or mine. Come to the table of love. Come to the table of joy. Come to the table of joy. This is God's table. It's not yours or mine. Come to the table of joy. more time in the celebration of communion than we typically do in this series. Some of the that song, some of the elements were a part of kind of a worship design that we've been using and there's a really beautiful great thanksgiving for this day that Diane and I will travel through together. So you'll be led in a lot of lines so um, let's kind of follow Diane's lead primarily. And there's a couple places where we may break into a stanza of that song. So Jim, sing loud with us when that happens. <laughs> and all of that, we come to this table with open hearts and hands. Friends, God is ever present with you. And the people say, and also with you. And, and also, also with, with you. you. Turn to the people around you and tell them this news. The peace of Christ is always with you. The peace of Christ, Christ is, is always, always with, with you. you. Come to the table of peace. Come to the table of peace. This is God's table, it's not yours or mine. Come to the table of peace. Listen, the body breathes together and out. As close as the breath, the, the Holy is present with us, uniting us through the life given so graciously to all creation. So lift up your hearts. And the family says, we lift them up to God. We lift, we lift them, them up, up to, to God. God. Let us give thanks to the Holy Living One because it is the right thing to do. Not only now, but always. For always is when God is with us. I invite you to open both palms upward in a sign in the sign language, forgive. We thank you, Creator God, that you formed every one of us in your image, conveying the limitless diversity of who you are. Now place your hands together in a sign, meaning to be with. We thank you, Sustainer God, that you are here with us. You call us to be with one another across lines that divide us by nation and location, ways of worshiping you, language and creed. Bring your hands close to your face in the sign for prayer. Become aware of the breath on your hands. We thank you, God, for breathing into us the breath of life. Even when we have turned away, you have remained with us close as breath. We remember and honor that this same breath unites us as your children and as your body in the world. And so we open our eyes, our hands, and our hearts to your will for us as told to us through your prophets. We join our voices together, praising you along with all who do, have ever done so, and will ever do so, repeating... Holy, holy, holy God, 
Holy, holy, holy God. Everywhere we see your glory. Everywhere we see your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. And the widest. And the widest. And the deepest. And the deepest. Place in our hearts. Place in our hearts. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of our Lord. Blessed is your son who came to preach the good news to the poor, to proclaim, proclaim release to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. Listen, people. The Lord is with you. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and sat down at the table and ate with especially those others considered unworthy or different or not my kin or other. Let us remind ourselves by saying, the Lord is present with everyone. The Lord, the Lord is, is present, present with, with everyone. everyone. Now we're going to come to the table of love, Jim. Come to the table of love. Come to the table of love. This is God's table, it's not yours or mine. Come to the table of love. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was over, he took the cup, and he blessed it, and he gave it to his disciples and said, this cup is the new covenant. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Come to the table of love again. Come to the table of love. Come to the table of love. This is God's table, it's not yours or mine. Come to the table of love. Let us be a community of messengers, proclaiming and reminding each other and creation that Christ has died, Christ, Christ has, has died. died, Christ has risen, Christ, Christ has risen. risen, Christ will come again, Christ, Christ will come again. I invite you to raise your hands in the ancient Christian posture of prayer. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and juice. Let them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for and with the world. The body of Christ liberated by life and witness to our connection with God and to one another. Be with us, Holy Spirit. Fill us so you can move through us making change in the world for the good of all people. I invite you to make a point of connection with those around you by laying a hand on a shoulder, holding hands, even simply extending your hands towards others, whatever is most comfortable for you. By your spirit, we are one with Christ, the host of this table and one with each other. Let this joy be seen outside of this place. It is with great thanks that the people say, Amen. 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 Hey, come to the come table to of joy. joy. <laughs> Jauntily. <laughs> come to the table of joy. Come to the table of joy. This is God's table, it's not yours or mine. Come to the table of joy. 
So as it always is, the table of the Lord is open to all. You don't have to belong to this church. You don't have to claim anything. You just have have your heart open and ready to receive. We'll receive communion this morning by intention. One of us will just tear off a piece of bread, and then the other will be holding a cup, and you just dip it in, ideally not up to your knuckles, <laughs> and then take and receive. And there's words we'll say as you do that. If you're feeling not quite ready for that level of communion in kind of the uh, health place where in these days there are separate cups and of bread and juice available, and you're welcome just to pick those up. So come as you're feeling ready. Uh, spend a few minutes in prayer, but then just come and receive the Lord's gift of joy on this day.
always tricky when I take communion last. Um, the table of joy requires much of us. It asks us to not rely on expecting to feel good all the time in order to do good in the world. It shows us that we can have fuller, more abundant lives when we choose to cultivate a practice of joy by staying awake, by staying fully present to ourselves and one another, and staying open to the unexpected movements of the Spirit. The grace of God abounds. The invitation of Christ is wide. The power of the transforming Spirit will surprise us every time. Amen and amen, my friends. There's no song more joyful than my personal favorite Christmas song. Let's let Jim lead us in. You might find it interesting to note that this song was not written by Isaac Watts as a Christmas song as it has eventually become, but it was part of a hymn series, the Psalm 98. It's the Psalm of David, Psalms of David imitated. So if you have trouble thinking outside the box, singing the song that you think of as a Christmas song, it really wasn't in the beginning. So let's sing with joy as we sing joy to the world. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare him room and heaven and nature sing and heaven and nature sing and heaven and heaven and nature sing joy to the world the savior reigns let all their songs employ while fields and floods, rocks, hills, and plains repeat the sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy, repeat, repeat the sounding joy. No more let sins and sorrows grow, nor thorns infest the ground. He comes to make his blessing flow far as the curse is found, far as the curse is found, far as, far as the curse is found. He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations move. The glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love and wonders of his love and wonders, wonders of his love. Go in peace. May the blessings of joy you find here go with you and move through you to others wherever you go this week. Let the people say, Amen. Amen. That was beautiful.